Thank you so much for tuning back into another segment here on GEMS Podcast. With me today in the hot seat is Shanti Hershenson. And here's a bit about Shanti. So Shanti is obviously a teenage author. She has her first two novellas were published when she was in sixth grade. Although her writing journey started long before then, Ever since she could hold a pencil, marker, or crayon, she was creating stories. They started from pictures, mere scribbles, and eventually turned into captivating tales. And today, Shanti is going to tell us about what it was like writing and publishing books as a teen author and how she uses TikTok to increase book sales and build a platform. So without further ado, please welcome Shanti Hershenson. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. So Shanti, before we dive into our segment of your story, I definitely want to play a rapid fire game or break the ice up front. So if we do rapid fire, it's 10 questions. And if we break the ice, I ask you one question and then we dive into the segment. So are you um, interested in the break the ice or the rapid fire? Um, Rapid fire. Okay, question number one. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? Um, I always go with every power, but considering I don't know if that's actually a superpower, I'd say to be able to fly. Awesome. Question number two, dream car. Gotta say, I don't know. Honestly, any car, as long as it's pretty and a pretty color. Three, favorite color. Blue. Four, favorite food. Bacon, 100%. <laughs> Hi. If you could go anywhere in the world and money was no option, where would you go? Hmm. I think Japan. Six. What's one piece of advice you would give to an aspiring author? Um, never give up. Try to write the same amount every single day and don't be so focused on making your novel perfect. S- seven. What was one challenging time in your life that you wish you could recreate? Hmm, I have a lot of different things I could put for that. Um, Honestly, right before I started writing all of my books, kind of in the beginning slash middle of the pandemic, I was just very, very isolated and very lonely. And I think I would change that just by telling myself it's going to be okay and um, helping myself find other things to do than um, watch Star Wars all day, every day, which I still do, so... So may the fourth be with you. (laughs) You too. (laughs) Hey, if you could go through life and be a fly on the wall and eavesdrop on any conversation, whose conversation are you eavesdropping in? And it could be past or present. Hmm. Definitely something in like ancient history that like no one knows about. And then like, I would just have the answers. Nine. If you won the lottery, what charities would you donate to? Um, definitely a lot of anti-bullying ones and researches on diseases. Honestly, it depends on like what's currently going on and what needs support. And 10, our pass or play question. If you play, I ask one last question. If you pass, our roles are reversed and you get to ask me a question. So do you want to pass or play? Play. Okay. If you could go to an exotic island and you had limited resources, but they allowed you to buy one piece of item, and here are your choices, two bananas and a mango, your favorite, t- your favorite t-shirt, and the third item is your favorite CD. What are you buying? My favorite CD. I, I need music. <laughs> awesome. And thank you for playing Rapid Fire with Genesis. You're welcome. So let's jump into our segment. You are um, an author. You have two um, novellas out and you did them when you were a teenager. And then you also use TikTok, which is a new phenomenon. So walk us through your your journey. What was it like for you publishing your first and your second book? So my first two books are really bad. Um, Genuinely, compared to what I have now in the books I publish now, um, those two I don't like them. Um, but I kind of published them without the idea that they were going to be successful. I just did it because I was like 11 and wanted a printed copy of a book that I'd written with my friend. And um, 
fat. And then it took me a few more months to actually start writing my first novel. And that was Biomlock. And um, then I was like, actually serious. Like, I want to publish this book. I want to market it. I want to do all this. Uh, this is the first draft of Biomlock. It's 800 pages long. And it had to be split into three books because of that. Um, but hold by it then, up again. Hold up the book so we can see the cover art. So hold let me see. Biomlock. Okay, walk us through what that book is about. Um, Biomlock is another dystopian novel that takes place 30 years after an alien invasion where the aliens have pretty much put all the humans in captivity. And um, what happens is they each get sent to a different biome. And, um, oh gosh, it's been so long. I'm trying to remember what this book is about. <laughs> um there's, it follows this teenager, Griffin, and his, and his friends, Kira and Colette, and Colette's in a different biome, but I'm not going to spoil it, so I'll explain how that happens. If you, You'll read the book, and you'll find out. Um, but basically, they get restless, and they get bored, and um, the idea is that they want to make it to the snow biome, and because the snow biome is where there's this resistance going on. So throughout the series, they're basically on this journey to get there, where some really, a lot of really bad stuff happens. Um, <laughs> it's very fun. So whenever you wrote Biome Lock, um, did you have the traditional way of publishing your book by going through a publishing house or did you self-publish the book? That's what I thought was going to happen. And then I actually ended up self-publishing because I was about 12 when I was writing the book. And I think I was still 12 when I finished the first draft. I'm really not sure. Actually, I think I was, no, I was 13. I had just turned 13. And um, it would be very hard to get traditionally published as a 13 year old with this very, very long book. Um, so what I decided to do is I'm gonna build a platform and then maybe when I'm like 16, I think I'm gonna try to traditional publishing unless my platform is so big by then that I don't have to. Super cool. And when you were going through this journey, what were your parents doing to help you along with the publishing of your book? Well, I didn't necessarily need help, but they were very much there for support and they were there to kind of just you know be there for me and to read my writing occasionally. However, I don't really let them read things. <laughs> um, my rule is you have to wait till it's published unless you're my editor. Otherwise, you can't read it. Um, I'm not so strict about that anymore because I have a whole online community of writers that I'll send like my favorite excerpts to. Um, but otherwise, yeah, my parents and family, they don't get to read it till it's published. Okay. Unless you're my sister, she gets special privileges sometimes. Super cool. And how old is your sister? Uh, we're twins, so she's also 14. Oh, wow. Okay. Does she write too or? Um, yeah, but not as much as I do. Okay. So after Biome Lock, what was your next book? Um, my next book was um, The Nightmare of Zyle Delane. It's another novella, but it's significantly longer than my first one. It would be thicker if it wasn't for the really small page size or no text size. Um, but that is a series of novellas. I have the second and the third one right here. And um, it's basically about this boy named Aaron who uh, lives, it takes place in like 2009 and um, he encounters a ghost or he thinks she's a ghost, but he's not quite sure. And um, to sum it up without spoiling it, um, a lot of really bad things happen and a lot, it's kind of trippy to read. Um, it takes him into the afterlife. It takes him um, into like alternate realities and literally different worlds. It's very interesting. Um, I don't know. I don't quite know what was going through my head when I wrote it because it's kind of it's a little disturbing, but it's young adult, so it can be. Um, but yeah, that's what that's about. I, I love the Zyra Delane series, but I also really don't. So. <laughs> so then at what stage did you decide to create TikTok as your conduit to build book sales and really just promote your books from the dystopian um, fictions to the novellas and all the other literary works that you're working on? So I've, I've been kind of lurking on TikTok, like seeing what was trending. And actually I had another TikTok account that was just for um, literally dedicated to Star Wars. Um, I think I decided to join TikTok in about July of 2021, I think. And that was when my fifth book was going to be um, releasing, You Won't Know Her Name. And I created a TikTok just with the intention of promoting the book and it blew up, sort of. It has like 20,000 views, I think, something like that. And from then on, like I started like kind of building my platform and sharing my story and talking about how I've written all these books and how like you can do it too. And like I share, I share a ton of tips and my account just blew up. 
I currently have over 20,000 followers and I genuinely just help people while posting about my books, which helps with marketing. And TikTok has been so crucial. It's just been incredible because I get to connect with my readers and I get to actually kind of interact with them and give them tips and produce content that goes, that helps sell books, but also helps um, like spread the word about me. So it's very, very fun. And then as far as school goes, um, do you, are you homeschooled? Do you go to public school, private school? And do you get to take your books there and kind of share them in like creative writing courses, um, English language arts? So I go to um, basically a, I go to a charter school. So it's basically a public school. You just have to get in. Um, And I do talk about my books a fair amount, though not as much as I could in any other school, just because one of my books is very much written about my school, and I kind of have to be a little quiet about it, um, because it's not really, it's about how I got bullied at my school, so um, it's hard to share about them, but yeah, I do go to a public school. I still have some homework, and I just have to really balance writing with it. Okay, super cool. And then as far as your journey, do you ever see yourself like partnering with Scholastics since they do book book fairs and they do some other incredible things in the community to help authors? Or what does that look like for you as far as um, getting your books out on a main scale outside of TikTok? Do you ever think that's something that you're going to do? I've been like trying it. Um, I'm doing book signings now. So that's really cool. And I'm entering my books into awards where I can then appear at like book fairs and stuff. However, a lot of it is kind of, it's very difficult to do when you're self-published. However, I've still done it. My books are in a few dozen stores and like that's working, but I've definitely thought about like traditional publishing in the sense that it's very easy to get events. And yeah, that's like one of my main reasons for wanting to get traditionally published. Super cool. And whenever you think about other teenagers that are your age who may have went through bullying similar to yourself, and I could totally resonate because I was bullied in high school, which is eons ago, over 10 years. (laughs) And, And I really commend teenage authors that are sharing their stories and helping others because you could easily be voiceless but you allow your voice and the inner lioness to roar and share your story so you can help others so do you have any books on bullying or do you are you thinking about maybe a nonprofit or just putting together a writer's workshop to really help them connect with the emotions that they face but then also put their elements out there to continue to pass the torch on to other people and give them power to share theirs so I have um you won't know her name which is my most popular book and it is a novel told in poetry about bullying um it's it's basically about my personal experience I have trouble describing it because I just want to say it's a very very disturbing book and it might trigger a lot of people but it, it's like it's my most popular book and I di- I have donated like all of the proceeds I made um to charities that support bullying and like anti-bullying, not for bullying, and topics related to that. Because I don't know, I don't want to make money off of you. I don't know her name. It makes me a little uncomfortable for some reason. I also have I Know Her Name, which is just another poetry book um, related to the bullying. However, I don't actually have a copy of that around me for some reason. I need to buy a new one. I think I gave it to my friend. <laughs> so for the first one, um, you know her name. Hold up the book um, cover again. And let's unpack the cover because I see a girl there and it looks like she's getting struck by lightning. Is that correct? Uh, she's falling from the sky. Oh, yeah. falling from the sky. Is that lightning in the background as she's falling? Like yeah. over? Okay. So walk us through why you chose the cover and the intent behind it. Um, so the cover has a little bit of a deep meaning. It um, Throughout the book, there is representation and kind of just the metaphor of a storm used throughout the book to describe what's going on. So if you want, I can actually read the first po- poem, which um, very much will sum up the cover a little. Okay, yeah, sure, go for okay. it. There lives a little girl whom you will never learn the name of, but she exists, she exists, she's real in these pages. Her features you may never learn, but you can know one thing, she is a survivor, or she thinks she is. She thinks she's faced the worst storm, but that's a lie and things are only calm because a deadly hurricane is coming. 
And just throughout the book, like the term storm and like rising above the storm has been used to describe like just what's occurring. And um, you can't really see the girl's face. You don't really know who she is. So you're not going to know her name. (laughs) Um, And yeah, that's basically why I chose the cover and had the designer do that kind of cover. And I think the girl falling kind of just represents a little with the story it's hard to describe without spoiling large portions of the book so I'm sorry okay no worries let me just try to pull it pull it out of you so the storms could represent maybe the trials and the tribulations you face in life or some of the testing that you go through but then at the end of the storm there's always going to be brightness whether it's the rainbow the sunshine the clear skies and etc but in order to get there you have to go through the darkness and it's in that darkness sometimes that you fall to the lowest point of your life and you hit rock bottom but then the most important thing is as you fall remember to pick yourself up and keep on going because even though you fall that doesn't mean that you're down and out it just means that you kind of just hit that bump in the road and it's okay to acknowledge that but don't stay there would you say that would be a good representation yeah okay awesome and now let's think about um you're in your prime (laughs) so teenager Teenagers go through a lot of emotions, a lot of challenges, whether it's peer pressure, trying to fit in, trying to find out who you are, what you identify with, and et cetera. So have you heard the question, hey, Shanti, what do you want to be when you grow up? I have. So what's your answer to that question? And would it be better if people started asking you instead of what do you want to be? Who do you want to be when you grow up? I think that's um, pretty a little more accurate. Honestly, I just want to be myself when I grow up. Like, I want to have all these books. I still want to be an author. I want to do something with writing. Um, I think that's, honestly, that's how I answer it every time. Just, well, I just want to do this when I grow up. Like, I just want to stay the same. Um, I can't really imagine myself having any other career other than being an author, so... Super cool. And then whenever you think about your sister, how close are your sister and you? Since y'all are obviously twins, are y'all identical or fraternal? Uh, We're fraternal and we're pretty close. Okay. Do y'all feel like you would go on a journey together as you get older and she plays into like the authorship of some of the things that you're doing or what does that dynamic look like because I know twins could be very very close or they could be polar opposite depending on who you talk to so we're very different but I also think um that we're definitely um I don't know we talked about living together when we're older so I think we are definitely gonna kind of find ourselves together and I know right now my sister wants to be a forensic scientist so that would be very interesting That would kind of be cool because imagine she's a forensic scientist and then she tells you some of the stories that she goes through and then you kind of just put your own spin on it without leaking like proprietary or sensitive information and then just put it in literary works and elements. I think that would kind of be cool to see what those stories are. Yeah. So Shanti, uh, what type of advice would you like to give to other teenagers like yourself? I honestly think um, in terms of like writing, The biggest thing is just to not underestimate yourself because I think genuinely the most common reason why people like especially teenagers don't write their books is because they think they're too young to do it and that's not true because you can never be too young to write a book it's not as hard I feel like as people make it out to be well I've like written 17 books so maybe that's why that's just why I'm saying that um but it's not very hard to write a book and you're like when you by saying oh I'm too young you're just making it harder for yourself. And instead you just, you can't give up. Just write the same amount every single day. Just write, get the words out and just then you can edit it later and you can make it as perfect as as it can be later. That's really great advice. And that is commendable. 17 books. And how old are you now? 14. 14. Wow. So, and you've been writing since you were 12. I mean, I've been writing like long before then, but I did start writing books when I was 12 amazing and you've Thank produced you. 17 books and out of those 17 books what are your top sellers um you won't know her name of course um I think I actually talked about um ranking them I believe it goes you won't know her name 
the Nightmare of Zyle Delane, and then I think it's either Biome Lock. The first Biome Lock book is published. This is the a third of the big one. And then I believe The God's Right Hand, which is my most recent release, is up there. However, considering it's still very much um, in like its first promotion phase, it's, um, you know, there's still a very long way up. However, I'm estimating that all of these books are going to be overtaken by my next release. However, I can't be sure just yet. Super, super cool. And congratulations on your accolades and 17 books at the age of 16, where other 16 year olds are probably uh, 14. Oh, 14. Sorry. (laughs) I'm trying to age you by two years. (laughs) That's just impressive. Like I just, Thank you. kudos goes out to you. One thing that I would love to see you do is maybe turn some of those books into audiobooks and see how that goes over. So you have the actual hard copies, the paperbacks, and then you have audio and maybe the digital aspects. So you could cater to all audience that read. I've definitely been working on it. I love audiobooks. I used to listen to them to fall asleep when I was younger. So it's definitely kind of just figuring out which book to turn into an audiobook first. I've talked about um, The Nightmare of Zion Delane because it's short. Um, however, I am not very good at reading audiobooks, except I want to do You Own Her Name because it's like in my voice. However, if I try to pretend to be a 10 year old boy um, for Zion Delane, it might be very difficult. <laughs> Yeah, I think that would be <laughs> would be difficult, but you could always find like a 10 year old, maybe someone in your family, someone that has really good diction that you know to read that book. And I think that will go go well. And so now as we jump into our call to action segment, what do you want the audience to do after they hear about your huge success at such a young age of 14 and the 17 books that you have out on the market? Um. Well, first off, you should check out my books. Um, I know that's the obvious one. I think, honestly, read, you should start. I, I always tell people like that they should maybe start with like The Nightmare of Zyla Delane or Biome Lock or The Axtell Insurgent or now like I'm telling people The God's Right Hand. However, anytime I tell people that, they just go and read You Own or Her Name first. So yeah, you should go by You Own or Her Name. It's a good book. Um, but in all honesty, this is the book I'm currently promoting. This is my most recent release. It's a really good book, if I do say so myself. Currently, I'm having a few reviewers complain that it's not believable. But what is fiction if not, you know, if like, uh, you know, believable? Because like, I don't know. The whole point of reading fiction is you're going to read some stuff that couldn't happen in real life, I feel like. So, you know, Absolutely. and the whole concept is insane. But it's also not. Um, And then my next release, though is like the best book I've ever written, if I do say so myself. So I'd suggest that um, you keep an eye out for Never Dying. It should be hitting the market either at the end of the month or at the end of um, June. And it looks like this. This is my proof copy. Ooh, okay. And this is this book has the best plot out of all the books I've written. It's like the best written and it's my favorite, so. Amazing. And Shanti, how can our audience connect with you via your website or where you primarily hang out on social media? We know you're a big TikTok girl now. So plug your TikTok, your website. And then of course, I will link the Amazon link that you sent me in your podcast guest form. I will share that in the show notes as well. All right. So first off, you can find me on TikTok at Shanti Who Writes. That's where I post all my writing tips, videos about my books, just everything. Um, you can also, of course, find my books on my website. You can find all my interviews. You can find my book signing um, dates and everything at ShantiHershenson.com. That's, S- that's S-H-A-N-T-I-H-E-R-S-H-E-N-S-O-N.com. Um, you can also follow me on Instagram. It's just at Shanti Hershenson. And if you want to buy my books, you can check on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Honestly, anywhere you you buy books online and check your local bookstore, they might have them. And there you have it, listeners and viewers of GEMS Podcast. Today, we had a 14-year-old author by the name of Shanti Hershenson, who has 17 books out right now and the 18th book about to drop. So make sure you tap in with her, go support some of the work that she is doing and encourage your teenagers if you have them or those young people in your life to grab some books and get writing. All of her contact information will be in the show notes. Make sure you like, 
subscribe and share this segment. We're on 40 plus platforms. You could also see all things video, video content and components over on YouTube by typing at GEMS with Genesis Amaris Kemp. And lastly, but not least, thank you so much for tuning in on a regular basis. Because of you, we are now ranked in the top 2.5% globally out of 2.8 million podcasts, thanks to you. And you can find out those metrics by going to www.listennotes.com. So until next time, peace, love, and lots of blessings. Have a great one, y'all.